This talk is about how and why computers should not just collect, but also acknowledge patient symptoms. This work was led by a multi-site team of researchers. For correspondence, please write to Farouk Alemi. Computer monitoring of symptoms is increasingly common. Despite widespread use, few automated data collection systems show that they have recognized patients' reported symptoms. These computers are narrowly constructed to be a data collection tool and follow the biomedical interview type known to reduce satisfaction of both providers and patients. Yet, an automated symptom monitoring can easily do more than data collection. Computer monitoring of patient symptoms can reassure patients that their symptoms have been recognized. It can engage patients in not only reporting their symptoms, but acknowledging that these symptoms are understood and relate to their clinicians. This presentation discusses why we should do so and how to do so. Recognizing and acknowledging patient symptoms is different from showing sympathy. Recognition validates patients' emotions. Sympathy is sharing of feelings. If a patient reports, I feel awful, a possible way of recognizing the symptom is to explore it further. The computer can ask, Tell me more why you feel awful. A sympathetic response would share the feeling by saying, sorry to hear that. The former verifies how and why the patient feels awful, while the latter shares the feeling. A machine that shows sympathy is fundamentally flawed, as patients know that machines do not feel. Machine sympathy may not seem credible, on the other hand, machines that show that they have understood the symptoms expressed by the patient fulfill the role that patients expect from these machines, that is, to explore, to record, and to report what symptoms the patient faces. Like motivational interviewing, the computer in interview itself can be therapeutic intervention. It can do far more than data collection. The interview is an opportunity to tell patients that they are important. Their symptoms matter in the management of the disease. We hypothesize that when computers do so, they might increase patient cooperation with the interview process and in the end, perhaps improve patients' adherence with treatment itself. We also hypothesize that machines that show understanding may improve the accuracy of symptoms collected. Reporting what has been understood is a form of feedback. Increasing level of feedbacks have been known to improve accuracy. By helping the patient describe and sort out experiences, the computer helps in labeling a symptom and in sorting out how symptoms are related to each other and affect treatment. Such checks and balances improve the framing of symptoms the frequency with which symptoms are reported, the accuracy and comprehensiveness of symptoms, and in the end, patients' compliance with treatment. Not every symptom can be acknowledged in, this, in the interview process. Feedback takes time. Imagine a machine that after each symptom verifies the entry. It will be not only time consuming, but also very frustrating. The computer needs to have a selective approach. Such a selective approach to feedback will add time to the interview, but may enhance the total experience so that the added time is justified. The first step in acknowledging patient symptoms is to have a reasonable error recovery. Errors in data collection are so frustrating to patients that they may undermine any other steps to improve patient's experience. A computer must distinguish the causes of error and respond differently. An error may occur if the patient has not said anything or has given an unanticipated response, is not sure of his or her, her symptom, if there is too much background interference. In all of these methods, 
The error message must be uniquely different so that the patient does not feel trapped into the requirement of an in insensitive machine. Finally, a human operator should back up the computer when it fails to understand the patient after a few steps. Patients will differ on which of the techniques discussed in this presentation will work best for them. The same patient may differ over time, particularly as treatment progresses. The patient may become angry, anxious, be in denial, have vague awareness of their symptoms, be tired, and might want to embellish. The computer needs to recognize these situations and take corrective action. Not surprisingly, this may make each computer interview unique. The techniques should vary to fit the patient's moods and expectations. Sometimes, the techniques used by the computer should be changed randomly just to introduce variety, avoid repetition, and prevent a perception that the computer is insensitive. Computers can ask about patient symptoms in different ways. Here are some examples. You can ask an open-ended question such as, what are the symptoms you're experiencing? Patient responses are matched to keywords then. It can ask if a patient has a specific symptom, as in, do you have fever? It could ask about a cluster of symptoms, such as, do you have fever, vomiting, or headache? It might change the words used in asking the same question. It might ask, did you vomit? or did you throw up? These get to the same underlying symptoms but use different words. Before proceeding with each new section, the computer makes a clear transitional statement. For example, I have reviewed the symptoms you had in our last call. Let me check now if there are any new symptoms. These statements prepare the patient for what's coming next. It shows progress and acknowledges what has occurred so far. Transitional statements are common in conversations and are a necessary step for framing of questions and changing patients' expectations. A computer that's collecting data on patient symptoms can explicitly show understanding by checking with the patient that the recorded symptom is a correct one. It can repeat the same words used by the patient or preferably use alternative words that have the same meaning. Explicit verification of a symptom is very mechanical and rewording is often used to break the monotony. For example, when a patient reports, I threw up last night, the computer may validate this feeling by saying, last night you vomited. In our pilot study, we asked the patient an open-ended question. Tell us how you felt since our last call. The response to this open-ended question is verified by standardized words used by the machine. If the patient says, I felt tired, the computer matches the word tired and classifies it at, as fatigue and might say, you were reporting fatigue. The length of the pause gives the impression that the computer is thinking through the patient's statement. A pause in the interview is not necessarily a silence. The computer might say, I see. It might say, hmm, implying that it's contemplating the answer given by the patient. Or it might say, I'm going to come back to this later. These and other similar statements suggest that an important statement has been made by the patient. In this approach, the patient's symptom is validated by connecting it to the history of the patient. The computer might say, this is a new symptom. Or it might say, you also mentioned fever last time. It seems you continue to suffer from it. These statements could be rhetoric, and in the interest of shorter interviews may not explicitly ask for a response. The statement is followed by the next question, and if the patient wishes, can go back. A history shows to the patient that not only the computer has understood the current symptom, but it also has captured and understood past reports. Asking for more details shows to the patient that they have been heard. 
When the patient says, I threw up, the computer might respond, how severe was it? Was it after dinner? Or was it a projectile? In our pilot, we routinely ask about the severity of symptom after report of a symptom. In addition, computers can ask about chronology, body location, quality, quantity, setting, any aggravating or alleviating factors and associated manifestations. The response details may or may not matter, but asking about them indicates that the original report of the system symptom was understood. One way to acknowledge the presence of a symptom is to suggest methods that can be used to cope with the symptom. For example, if the patient reports vomiting, the computer can ask, I see that you were prescribed pills for vomiting. These are small blue pills. Are you taking these pills? These additional statements reassure the patient that their reported symptom has been understood. If symptoms are considered very severe, or if symptoms are a threat to successful treatment outcomes, the patient can be put in touch with the clinician. Clinicians can also instruct the computer to more frequently and explicitly monitor a particular symptom that they are concerned about. Computers can listen tirelessly to the patient, but when the patient pauses, it's important to use active prompts to encourage additional comments. After the patient has reported one symptom, the computer can prompt for more detail by rewarding the patient's reported symptom into a question. It may ask, you felt short of breath? A pause after such a question would solicit more details. Whether these details are integral to the checklist of symptoms is immaterial. Active listening might also take the form of short phrases such as, tell me about another symptom or tell me more. An important way to reassure patients that they have been understood is to anticipate their responses by asking leading questions. Clinicians often do this. Early in clinic visits, clinicians ask general questions, but later during the same visit, good clinicians ask questions that anticipate patients' responses. Leading questions are an efficient method of both asking about a symptom and suggesting an understanding of the patient's condition. It's generally done by changing questions into declarative statements and following it with a brief verification. For example, if the computer based on the patient's history anticipates that the patient has fever, it may change from do you have fever to you still have fever, right? The, que the response to these leading questions is organized to always be yes. Repeated responses of yes will leave the patient with the impression that the computer is aware of their condition and that the interview is coming to an end. An easy way for computers to tell the patient that they are being understood is to report that their data has been communicated to their clinician. Even if the data are not yet examined by a clinician, the computer needs to inform the patient. A statement such as, the symptoms you reported in the last call were sent to the office of your doctor, reassures the patient. When the clinician indicates need for more closely monitoring of a symptom, the computer can also alert the patient with a statement such as, your doctor was concerned about your fever and wanted us to call this morning to verify that it has subsided. We are in the process of testing the ability of these innovations in improving symptom monitoring. In particular, we have designed a symptom system to collect the symptoms in the therapeutic related symptom checklist. It is too early to tell what impact these innovations in patient interviewing will have on patient participation or on its on the patient's eventual healthcare outcomes.